macabre mirrors. You look in them, you see stuff, you adjust stuff, you go about your day. But in horror movies, mirrors can be bad. They crack, they bleed, they grab you, they pull you into another dimension, you know, the usual. 1990's Mirror Mirror starts with one lady stabbing another lady to death a few decades in the past. They appear to be sisters, or were until one died from the stabbing. Her attacker doesn't want the mirror in the room to see this, but the mirror wants to see this. Years later, the mirror is discovered by Yvonne DiCarlo and a lesser known Mary Gross character. The house is then sold to weirdo Karen Black and her Winona Ryder Beetlejuice daughter. The mirror, however, remains inside. Megan is played by an actress named Rainbow Harvest, which sounds fake of course, but apparently that's her real name. She worked somewhat steadily for a few years and then completely disappeared from Hollywood. Those kinds of stories always fascinate me, but there's very little info out there about Rainbow, so we'll leave it at that. Megan is understandably going to have problems fitting in at school based on how she dresses and the fact that it's 1990 and the world isn't ready for hot goths yet, since we've got four more years until The Crow. And yep, she proceeds to have problems fitting in at school. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. She's befriended by Nikki, who is running for student council president against a mean girl and by Nikki's boyfriend, Ron, sort of. Also, Mean Girl's boyfriend seems to be into Megan, which is odd for a movie like this that the bitchy girl's boyfriend is sympathetic and the nice girl's boyfriend is pretty much an asshole. This will absolutely be justified later, however. Meanwhile, back at the house, the spooky mirror kills a dog for peeing on it, which results in pet mortuary dude William Sanderson showing up. You think this might be venturing into some kind of pet cemetery ripoff territory, but no, he just has dinner with the family one night, which pisses off the mirror and it produces a bunch of flies. Maybe the mirror is from that Amityville 4 yard sale. At one point, Megan muses out loud that she wishes her dad was still alive, and that night the mirror kind of grants her wish, but of course in the most horrific way possible. He couldn't be here. Dead people never come back. Around this time, Yvonne DiCarlo, who has been reading up on spooky mirrors for some reason, realizes that this mirror in particular is bad news. She notes that demons use the mirror to do your bidding and then after gaining your confidence, they can invade our world and spread more evil. Megan has been facing more and more bullying at school to an almost absurd level at times. The mirror starts helping her exact some revenge against her bullies. Trivial stuff at first, but after, uh, she pretty much, um, literally has sex with the mirror. The revenge escalates to murder, and when Nikki is not on board with whatever the hell is happening, Megan turns on her too. After a wild finale, you're left with the old saying that you shouldn't make a deal with demonic mirrors, no matter how much your life sucks. That, that's a saying, right? While Mirror Mirror isn't anything groundbreaking, 1981's Evil Speak immediately came to mind as I watched this, it's got enough going on to deserve a recommendation, especially considering it's currently a little seen horror film in a world where horror nerds purport to having seen everything. The film is a little too reliant on extended slow motion sequences, and it's certainly got a creepy vibe throughout, even without the mirror fucking, and the performances are mostly solid. As I watched this, I realized my rating was going to depend on how the film wrapped up, as it's one of those scenarios that's going to be completely unexplainable to any kind of authority. It almost pulls it off with a bizarre twist in the last few minutes that mostly works, but not completely. A for effort though, it was a good try. Also, not only does the dog die, but there are two dogs in this and they both die. That's two dog kills, that's a rarity. The sound design for whenever the mirror is being evil is pretty good, despite just being a voice run through a million audio filters. The music, composed by the film's producer, who was also the special effects supervisor, is decent, although a bit silly. I mean, menacing kettle drums are an interesting choice. I can control it now. Make it what's happening. See? Control. Stop it. It's also worth noting that Mirror Mirror was not only directed by a woman and written by two women, but also that the main characters are all women as the men just end up being fodder for the evil Mirror. The two boyfriends? Dead. William Sanderson is just a minor character who briefly dates Karen Black, and the only other male character is really just a very laid back Ned Ryerson as a teacher at the high school. For 1990, this is kind of remarkable. Ladies, doing stuff. In the 90s. 
Yeah. Nikki, things are going to be different from now on. 